How to get it with Shaco? By dominating the early game. Securing all the objectives. And then closing the game as quickly as possible. Welcome everyone, I'm the clone and in this video I will show you how to do just that. First I will address the build and runes I use for the past 2 weeks to carry with. It actually doesn't matter what build you're playing with, the strategies that I will talk about work regardless. But I do recommend you to try the following build as I believe it performs best in the current meta. The first items are Dork with Berserker's Greaves. This early game item combination allows you to 1v1 anyone, force damage when ganking, dominate the enemy jungler and quickly secure any objective. Then Essence River with Prowler's Claw are the backbone of the build. Essence's passive combined with Close Active allows you to truly one-shot any squishy and carry the game. Furthermore, Close Active also allows you to better reach anyone, especially when combined with Yomus, which is the next item that provides you with both passive and active movement speed. Speed that almost doubles Shakyu's Q reach. Allowing you to jump from least expected places late game and get behind the most protected enemy lines, resulting in a secure team fight and maybe even the game. Next, Lord Dominix works best against armored opponents, opponents that can be melted by using the Hell of Blades bug combined with Shaco's E passive, thus having a permanently active Hell of Blades clone that slows enemies with each basic attack, enabling you to kite and win any 1v1. Lastly, a simple yet efficient item. Infinity Edge. Its raw stats are solid, while the passive empowers the backstep crit, which results in even faster one-shots. Optionally, Mo works really well against a full AP enemy team as its shield can turn around any fight. Runes. Hell of Blades with sudden impact for late game one-shots or cheap shot for early game DPS. Eyeball Collection is the next only decent option, with Relentless Hunter being the last rune from the Domination Tree. Here's the build, with all optional items and runes. I've learned a lot from the games I played on my Smurf, and after getting it to Diamond in just a few days with a 75% win rate, I got enough games where I could pick a few to show you what strategies I use to get fed and end the games as fast as possible. I will start off with my favorite strategy that can decide a game in less than 3 minutes. I start on the top side. The reason is simple. I want to start on the opposite side of the enemy jungler, and usually junglers start on the bot side to receive a better leash. With Shaco you can solo clear the red buff without taking any damage. Now it's time to invade. And again, the reason why I do this in every game is because it's unexpected for the enemy jungler and thus always works. Also, to quickly touch on the maxing order, after one point into W, Q and E, you want to max ult whenever possible. Then E and Q. You do not need more than one point into W as AD Shaco. Not even to farm the jungle. Back to the invade. You now have just enough time to clear both blue buff and throw before the enemy jungler gets to wolves. For safety, place the ward here and after the box expires, use Q behind the blue buff for extra damage. Also, pro tip here, if the blue starts moving away from you, it means that the enemy jungler is already at wolves and thus you won't have enough time to also clear frog. In this case, you're dealing with a high clear speed jungler. You have two options. Either jump in with Q and secure the big wolf and then try to 1v1 the enemy jungler or wait inside the bush with a box. Either way, you're already at an advantage as you took their blue buff and have the drop off on them. If neither happens and you have enough time to clear the frog, go back inside the blue's bush and place box behind you to get the enemy closer to the bush before the box triggers. Now, use Hell of Blades and the red buff slow to melt them down. As they're half HP, Q for a backstab with crit, E and ignite at the same time for a secured takedown. If you did all of this and succeeded to get first blood, Congratulations, you just did half the job to secure the win. Your next options are secure both scale crabs or gank any available lanes. Stop. <laughs> yeah, boy. 
But what happens if the enemy jungler starts on the top side as well? To tell on which side their jungler started on, just look at whichever lane is late. If it's their top lane who's late, it means they leash their jungler. If it's their bot lane, then the enemy jungler started on the bot side. Now, if you realize that the enemy jungler also started on the top side, the best strategy here is to use plant, rush towards your second buff and then still invade. It takes about the same time to do 2 buffs and frog or 3 buffs. And you'll always get level 3. From now on, you can proceed with the same strategy. Also, when invading the enemy red buff, instead of the bash, place the box right here and hide behind this corner. Then, after the box triggers, rush towards them and you know the rest. First blood. Now, what happens when you get unlucky and mess up this early game strategy? Perhaps you got caught and now you're behind. Well, the best strategy here is to farm a gank. But most importantly, always just go for buffs and objectives. Here I went for the enemy red buff and then rushed straight to secure the dragon as a level 6. Pause right there. Observe that even though I was behind in farm, I was still higher level than Kha'Zix. That's because I prioritized buffs while he went for jungle camps. Regardless, I lose dragon as I didn't have smite, but secure the takedown on Kha'Zix. Also, here's a really important combo you can use. Shaco's clone also benefits from the ease slow passive. Thus, you can use box in front of you to zone and then clone. My execution was rather bad, but the idea is still there. I zoned the enemy from myself until I got my Q cooldown back up and then killed them. Next, our bot lane pulls a classic move and ints. You stupid. Are you right? But observe what I do buff buff into objective which in turn results in me catching the Kha'Zix again. Now look at how instead of being scared of my opponent I stick on to them and contest the plant which is the only reason why I will survive here. Confidence will make your enemies doubt themselves. Thus Kha'Zix made mistakes which in turn gave me both gold and a herald. Unfortunately for us, because the enemy team is not too bad, we got caught as well. The game is far from being won, but I intentionally chose to feature this one. Because it's not a 15 minutes easy win, nor a 15 minutes struggle. Also, I will be making a few mistakes. Thus, I'm going to explain how to avoid such mistakes and not give the enemy team any chance to make a comeback. Now, a pro tip. After pushing the wave under your tower, enemies will always want to get at least one plate. That is the perfect moment for you to jump in with a box and with ease slow melt them. Better yet, you can also use clone to get the job done against a tougher enemy. Also, after a successful gank, if you have herald, you can do the following. Use it when the tower has 3 plates left. By the time Herald spawns and charges, the tower will have 2 plates left and thus, boom, rip tower. If you use Herald too early, the tower stays up with its strongest plates, which you obviously don't want. Next, buff, then path towards dragon. And who would have thought? Another random encounter. I used box in the hell of blades bug on clone to try to maximize DPS, but in me bodling follows up. Kha'Zix gets caught, yet my team gets overpowered. Luckily for me, Fizz gets overconfident and I win the 1v1. Then I path straight towards red buff. Observe how for the past 10 minutes I've basically only really went for buffs, objectives and ganks. Anyways, oh shit, anyways, misfortune overstays. Notice how I use detector before approaching the bash, then Q before I leave it as to not give my position away. And because of relentless hunter and claw, I managed to catch her. Unfortunately, because of that recent fight, my bot lane was out of position and thus the enemy took dragon. I secured the bash with the box and tried to bait with clone and that happens. I die in less than half a second. Kha'Zix, even though not overfed, can be extremely strong still. Especially because with Shaco, no matter how strong you are, you'll always be squishy and thus get one shot by anyone. Boom. Furthermore, I lose my blue buff to Cassidine, who then kindly donates it to FaZe, who then also gets the tower for free. It's free real estate. Regardless, I see on the minimap that Kha'Zix is trying to force a dive on my bot lane. Counter ganking is extremely powerful because it disrupts the enemy's plans and it especially works well as you usually get to catch them off guard. Place the box and then use clone with a hell of blades bug, but he gets away. Fizz shows up, I kite him with clone and go for that one shot with claw. And he also gets away. Meanwhile, my bot lane ends. 
Boss Rider. I have half the kills in my team and thus should try my best to carry, but I'm getting pretty fucking unlucky here. The point is, when this happens to you, the best you can do is keep your utmost cool. I luckily catch the MF and pretend to back off. Boss Rider. With Shaco, as I already mentioned, is extremely important not to be seen before going in with Q. Thus, while ganking, these are the best walls you can queue through to get the best ganks. Also, pro tip here, you can queue from Fogo 4 as long as you know the range of enemy vision, and this works best when hugging walls. Or while behind bushes as they both block vision. Anyways, next I go for the bomb plating Nami, unfortunately Fizz is there too. I wait for my Q school down and manage to get him as he misplays. I yet again pretend to leave, just to Uno reverse card on the misfortune. Yumi also has ult, which results in an easy takedown and then I decide to follow Nami under tower with Clon. Yumi ints hardcore, but we secure both heals. See what I was saying about keeping cool? Even though it seemed like, regardless of how well I played, the game was still going bad. Yet within those last two plays, it finally feels like we're back to carrying this one. Now it seems like a parasite has permanently attached to myself. But I'm not complaining. If I have to carry this backpack with me throughout the entire game to win it, I will. My goal here is to secure a dragon, and in order to do that, I must scout the area and make sure we have vision before the objective. Also, in this instance, catching enemies off guard right before the objective spawns increases our chances of securing it. I immediately jump in as I see Fizz using his E on minions and secure the kill. Now, here's a really neat strategy you can use to catch as many enemies as you can. Pretending to leave just to jump in again will surprise almost anyone in any situation, because they feel safest just as they see you leave. Thus, I also secure misfortune while Cassidy gets Kha'Zix. These macro plays have secured us the dragon. Now I go towards the bot lane pixel bash as I predict that MF will path through there to defend the tower. Just like with dragon, I know where my enemies want to be, thus I camp the path they need to take. This works best on the bot lane just after a successful gank, killing the enemy laner again as they try to path to the lane, then using Herald to get their tower usually results in the enemy laner getting so demoralized they just give up. My next items are Yomus and Essence Reaver. Now, as we have entered the late game, I will mostly focus on split pushing as lane minions give more XP than jungle camps and catching enemies by predicting their pathing to secure objectives. Which is exactly what I do with MF here. Buff again into catching the enemy Nami of guard. Split pushing into catching the misfortune again. Let's not talk about that. Because of how squishy the enemy team is, my next item is Collector. And yet again, I try to go for pigs and secure the area. I pretend to leave just to queue back in and one shot MF. Also, look at how insanely long Q's range is with his movement speed. Boom, one shot. Collector, double kill, let's go. Kha'Zix next. Clone to bait him and. Hello, motherfucker. These are the mistakes I was talking about before. Instead of following myself and throwing the game, the best play here is to split push or try to bait the enemy team at an important objective, force a team fight, ace them and then end the game. Which is actually exactly what I do next. I place a few boxes to zone and look for Kha'Zix. I blink from far away, one shot him and then use clone to avoid a trip to Brazil. Boss Rider. That was the game. These late game team fights decide the game. It's really that risky, especially when both teams have the potential to end after an ace. For instance, split pushing late game is also really important, especially if you have Baron. Pressuring side lanes draws enemy attention and disorients them. But if done uncoordinately from your team, especially if they have a tendency to get caught instead of stalling and giving you time to force the enemy team to back off and lose positioning, you can lose the game in no time. Hello, we exist. Hello, we existed. From what I've noticed in this new meta with Shaco, focus less on split pushing and rely more on overpowering the enemy through team fights and objective securing. In this other game, my team was really not into winning the game. Let me show you how I managed to turn the game around through team fights and objective securing. Target Prio is something invaluable. Always focus the most dangerous enemy that you can one shot. In this instance, LeBlanc. If I were to have gone for Rumble, LeBlanc would have one shot in me and 
then we would have just lost the game. Next, I farm lane minions and path to scout the Baron area. As mentioned earlier in the video, confidence is extremely important. Even against this Yasuo, if I were to not have been confident and let him hit me with a tornado, I would have likely died because of how squishy Shaco is. Luckily for us, catching Yasuo while my team got rumble results in us getting Baron uncontested. And what we rush for next is Dragon. I take red buff and prepare for the team fight. Always assess the enemy team and see where you can squeeze through to get to their backline. Usually at an objective you want to have as much breathing space as possible, catch enemies while they are on their way to the respective objective or zone them from it. Here we do not have that luxury. I see my team engaged and thus go straight for the blank again, but boom. I get denied and disengaged. Champions like Jenna are an insane threat to Shaco as they can cancel your one shot potential. Now pay really close attention at how I'm following the enemy. For one second there, pretend you're the enemy. Where could you go in the situation to position yourself better? That's exactly what I'm always thinking as Shaco. Always try to predict where the enemy wants to get. Because if you know where they want to get and know the way they need to take to get there, then you know exactly where they are at all times. Jenna out. And thus we secured both Baron, Dragon and we came back into this game. Yet it's far from over. All it takes is one shitty team fight for us to lose the game. As Spy gets caught, my thought process is, we stall the game until he respawns and try to get one or two picks as we now have better control of the map, thus more breathing room, thus more opportunities to catch anyone off guard. I sneak the red buff and watch the enemy team closely. When they recall from inside their jungle, they feel most safe, especially when they're not alone. Pause right there. I will not attack Jenna. If I kill her, I will then get insta killed by LeBlanc. That's right. Perfect timing. Remember how Jenna disengaged me in previous team fights? Now it's a 5v4. I re-engage, use claw, clone, one shot rumble. The game is over. By doing what I did, by doing picks, I single-handedly took out three enemies and forced the remaining two in unfavorable positions. This is the best way to close games as fast as possible. Either bait to objectives like Baron, camp paths, or do peaks when the enemy team is spread, not while they are all grouped together ready for a team fight, but before that, when they have their guards down. Vision control is objective control. Objective control is game control. Game control means victory. In the long run, macro will always win over micro. Lastly, here's a map with the best wording positions to know where to use the tactor before engaging. I'll be talking more about micro plays, combos, all Shaco builds and tips in the upcoming best Shaco guide for season 12. But until then, if you enjoy my content and want to support me, just drop a like and subscribe. And as always until next time, yeah. stay safe.